my name is Derek. I'm with the band Conquest. Uh, uh, looking forward to doing this interview with you guys. And I got the record just came out. It's called Paradox, Dark Star Records. And uh, looking forward to doing this interview with you, my friend. Beautiful. Derek, thanks for joining us today, brother. Again, my pleasure. Definitely my pleasure. So as you say, Conquest released your latest album, Paradox, back on April the 19th, mate. So it's been about a month and a half now. So how's the initial reaction been? So far, really good. I mean, you know, we've uh, pretty blessed on how much uh, attention it's getting these days. And that's awesome. You know, when you're when you're a musician and you're an artist at it, you, you hope for the best, you know. Prepare for a disaster and everything else is gravy after that. That's right. That's exactly right. Expect the worst and, and keep pushing for the best, you know? Yeah. So tell us a bit more about the album from a musical point of view, mate, and what you were going for with it. So the record Paradox is, 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 is well, 16 songs. One is a cover of The Man on the Silver Mountain. Uh, that's an old Rainbow song. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Pretty Love sure that song. Be, right? Yeah. So Dio and, and Richie Blackmore was like early on a big inspiration for me. So I was really into that old priest and stuff like that. So that's how that song found its way on, on the record. Uh, just something I always wanted to record and that kind of spawned the whole thing. And then the other tracks, we had a bunch of tunes written for, for the record, but then COVID hit start, you know, fired up and everything was like that. And then um, the original drummer had left the band for a little bit because of his, uh, he had major uh, personal issues he had to go deal with so that he's been out of the band now tim's out of the band and lee came in and filled in for the last two years filled in i shouldn't say became the member of the band and uh just killed it on the drums you know man brought this thunder to to the songs so we put all these songs together and uh ended up with 16 tracks after writing with lee and, and we ever just piled in piled in next one next one you know and really cool and it's really a diverse record have you have you checked it out yeah, I had to listen to about half of it while I was doing the um doing the questions. I made I like it very old school, very old school with a little touch of new stuff here and there. And and I try to keep the production raw. I don't like overproduced stuff, so um, we kept it raw, and old school, like you said, old school. So, oh, now just say so someone hasn't heard of the band much before. You, you've released the singles "Walking Dead" and "Writings on the Wall." So, are they a good sonic representation of, of what you expect overall? Um, yeah, there's going to be some more things coming out. I know uh, Love, Am Love Amplified is going to come out in a little while as a single. Um, uh, World of Hate is probably going to show up. There's a lot of diversity on the record, so we like to get it all out. And I think that people who like heavy metal for real, you know, I mean, who listen to anything from Iron Maiden to to uh, Priest and, and, and you know, it's just traditional metal stuff, Dio and that kind of stuff. I think they'll appreciate the record. So, no. well, let's just expand on that a little bit more, mate. So, just say there's people out there who have never heard of Conquest before, like use the songs from your whole catalog. Give me three songs that people can listen to, to, to as an introduction to the band. So, off the Paradox record, I'd probably say I would send them Babylon America. I'd probably send them um, Valley of the Damned. Cause we are, we like to thrash. We like to go fast too, not just the mid tempo stuff. Um, but then, yeah, you know, writing on the wall or, 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 or walking dead, save me. Uh, you know, the, those songs live, they're still slamming in a, in a, in a little different way. You know how that goes. Um, but the new record is being received. What, what the shows that we've played with all the new tunes, it's gone over real well. Even Celtic mist is another one, totally different vibe, man. I mean, just, I don't like to make a ditto. I don't want every song on the record to be the same and uh, been writing for many years. Right. So putting it together you know, from the devil's creed opening, that's really traditional to me, power metal and, and Lee kills on that song. The, the drum fills in that song are astronomical, you know? So that's, that's how I view it. And then we move to the next track down the line. But if I had to pick those three, that's probably what I'd pick. No worries. Now I'm not sure if I understood the press release properly, mate, but the impression I got from reading it was that you wrote and recorded a lot of it in the studio at the same time. Is that right? So, yeah. So I own my own studio. So the guys would, we come over on, you know, through a whole weekend and we just get together and write and, and play hooks and get it going and then track a little bit of it, get it figured out. Um, usually I write all the lyrics so that I, I work on melodies and all that. It was a lot 
kind of a little more um, organic that way. Not all the songs were done that way, but there was a, you know, a fair portion of them was done that way. And it was really organic and, and, and allow, allowed Lee just to, you know, to me, drummers sometimes can overthink music. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, this time uh, with Lee doing it, it was just, it was just powerful and, and aggressive without too much thought put into it. And, and sometimes I think that's the best music out there. And so you make a good point there. Like if you're doing it that way, like everything would be sort of raw when you come back to it. Like if you sort of sit on it and digest, you know, play around with it a little bit, you put those polishes on it, you know, and it sort of becomes a, a structured song. But if you're just jamming it out and putting it down there, you get a real feel of it. Well, it, totally, man. It's one of those things that, you know, not, not all songs, but some songs are contrived, you know, and put together, you know, okay, here's this part. Let's mesh it with this part. Let's put this, push this together. But um, then there's some stuff that's just straight out hard rock, heavy metal, where you just get in a room and, and jam it out. And so there's a lot of both of these. What makes the record cool to me is both of these elements are on this record. And um, that's not always easy to do and still make it sound like they belong with each other. Yeah. Now, looking through the track list, and mate, there's no song on there called Paradox, which means the album title must have a bit, bit more of a special meaning to you. Well, it's about the concept of the music. Everything has a, a parallel to it. And a lot of the music it represents, you know, kind of what's going on in, in the world, what's going on in America, what's going on. But there also, there's just good old straight up hard rock songs like Love Amplified. That's about falling in love with a song, with, with, with okay. the guitar. You know, when I was like 13 years old, I started playing the guitar and that became everything, right? So kind of fell in love with the, with, with the guitar. So Love's Amplified, right? Now you you've been quoted as saying that the album had many obstacles. Like what what were they and, and how did you get around them? So like I said, Tim, uh, who, who was the drummer of the band um, for many years, um, had to leave the band due to uh, personal issue situations. So um, that kind of kind of came out of nowhere for us somewhat, and so we were in the middle of making the record, and all of a sudden we hit the brakes. And then Lee came back in and Lee, I've known Lee for a long time and um, he fit in like a glove, man. He, he stepped in and just bam, pounded them drums out. So that was an obstacle that I wasn't quite sure how that was going to go because you're in the middle of doing something. you got one feel going on that all of a sudden, you know, erase, start over, you know, try this with this, you know, and uh, it turned out phenomenal. And, and, and the same thing with Rob, you know, Rob's a great bass player, but he lives a little further away from us. So it takes him a little more for him to get here to do it. So a lot of that was done over the telephone, you know, Hey man, check this hook out, you know, get this blah, 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 blah. So then when he got here, he, we work real well together. Everybody, we don't try to be uh, oh my way or the highway thing. We yeah. work with, with each other so that we can make it about the whole band and the music comes out as the whole band. Now we touched on this before, mate, but you can definitely hear any music that you've got a lot of that old school thrash roots to you. So as a band, like how difficult is it playing older music like that, that everybody knows and loves, but putting your own spit on it to make it A sound like yours and B sound a bit more modern and fresh. Right. Which is a, you know, as you guys know, man, it's, it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do anymore. Especially nah. if everything has been done. I mean, when you go get the brand new Testament record, as much as I'm a Testament fan, you know, you're waiting for that spark because you've heard, I mean, what else can they do? Yeah. But yet it's great music. You know, it's great music. And that's what I tell everybody in today's world. If you're over 25 and you're listening to music, listen to it two or three times before you form an opinion, because you've heard everything already. So nothing's going to shock you. You know what yeah. I mean? So um, enjoy the music for music. Don't try to always look for the new greatest, latest thing. So that being said, um, we just try to keep it real, keep the music uh, uh, aggressive. Like you said, in the old days, we were we were more of a thrash band when you rewind. But as you get older, too, man, um, I, I don't want everything to go 90 miles an hour. I like stuff that, that drives, too, that has that slow gra you know, movement. So I'm cool with all of it. And, and the band is, too. You know, so uh, Mike's leads are just, you know, on the record. Take, take a song like In the Heavens. I don't know if you check that track out or not, but it's so different than anything else on that record. And one day he came to me and started picking this piece out. I'm like, that's cool, man. I don't know what we'll do with it, but it's cool. <laughs> and then the one other time he came in strumming this piece. And I go, hey, play that other part you had that one time. And he did. Next thing you know, you know, hit the record button. We mesh it together. 
hey man, don't play the lead on your electric guitar. Go pick up that acoustic over there and play the lead on that. Just something, you know, way off the beaten path. So that's how we do it. Yeah. Actually, I don't think I've ever asked anyone this before, but you just brought it to my mind. Like a, a lot of musicians will talk about that. Like they'll talk about a riff that someone had ages ago and then you bring it into a song, but you guys have got that much music in your head. How the fuck do you remember a riff someone played 10 years ago to put in another song? It's amazing, but you do. Speaking of that, so you take Love Amplified. Mike brought that little diddly, uh, the front piece that's kind of like a Van Halen thing or whatever. And then I wrote some hooks for it for the verses and all that. And then we were like, oh, we need a bridge and a break. Well, hey, remember that one song? So we wouldn't grab that out of there. You know what I mean? It's just the way it is. And it, you feel it and you know it fits and you start playing it. It's cool. Yeah. So very yeah. sweet. Yeah, you've got a show coming up with Burning Witches on July the 12th as well, mate. Tell us more about that. So, Burning Witch, are you familiar with the, with the girls? Yeah, I've interviewed them before. Lovely. Great band. Lovely people. Yeah, looking forward to playing with them. So, um, just one of those situations where the promoter in town on the other side, I mean, they're that's a good distance away from us, but the room that they're playing is a good draw for us. We draw real well there. So, um promoter called and said hey you want to be on the show and we said sure let's do it um, we're getting ready to work on stuff for one more video and then we'll be uh working on playing out in the fall we got a bunch of stuff going to happen in the fall hasn't been released yet but it's, it's happening so um Very looking forward good. to that well all right Derek. well thanks for your time mate been a pleasure speaking with you today the new album from conquest paradox is out now and if you like your music hard fast loud and old school give it a crack yeah, it's available everywhere on all forms of media. You can buy it on vinyl, CD, all your download sites, wherever you want. Um, the band obviously appreciates the CD sales and the, and the, and the vinyl sales. So, and, and to me, I'm old school. I like tearing stuff off yep. and looking at it, and, you know, and reading what, what it says, you know, so. But I've only got a CD player in my car. I don't even worry about streaming shit through it. If I got to listen to music in the car, bang, in goes the CD. You know what? I, people call us old school or whatever you want to say to me that's how music is supposed to be done 100 percent. in that car jamming on 10 you know what i mean 100 percent, brother i'm on your side there awesome man well i sure do appreciate you man and again the record paradox check it out conquestmetal.com um and uh we really appreciate you spreading the word for us